Good morning, and welcome to all of you. On behalf of uh, Hank and uh, the family, we are grateful that you have come to honor Carolyn's life, as we, we do call this a celebration of life, because life is a gift from God that we value and treasure. And it's a day to thank him for the life she lived among us and the joy she brought into our lives. And there's family and friends from Florida and Arizona and Texas and Michigan. Thanks for coming from a great distance. And I'm sure I've skipped some of you, but we're grateful that all of you are here. Uh, after worship downstairs, there are loving folks putting together a nice reception. And we'd love for you to stay. The family would love to, uh, to share and to hear stories of Carolyn. Um, some of those, I'm sure... Uh, things we'll miss and things we love about her, um, but also those funny moments we've had in life with her. Come on down, uh, enjoy some time together, and share those stories. We begin today um, in the name that was placed on Carolyn in her baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we sing together. You're uh, welcome to join your voice uh, with us in how great thou art. i 
we turn now to God's words to us, and the first reading is from Psalm 23, written by King David, a man after God's own heart, a man flawed in many, many ways, and yet trusted that God would do for him, and you hear his confidence in these words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We have two gospel readings, both from John's gospel. Our first reading, comforting words um, from chapter 14. Jesus' own words. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may also be. And you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. And it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Our second gospel lesson from, again, John's gospel, the 11th chapter. And it's a a time where Jesus raised Lazarus, who had been in the grave four days, raised him to life. Now, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. As that gospel continues, Jesus backs up his words by calling Lazarus from the grave, and he lives. We pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness to Carolyn and to all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace. 
from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus. Amen. In John's Gospel, chapter 13, the first verse, we read these words. Now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to his Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. This is that Passion Week where Jesus will be crucified and then on the third day raised to new life. But now in the chapters that go forward, he enjoys a Last Supper with people he loved, with the 12 disciples. He teaches them about serving one another. He takes the lowest servant role and washes their feet and said, this is how you will care for your yourself each other and for others he shares some hard truths because he lived out the the truth of sharing truth in love he tells them some hard things he calls them to love each other as he has loved them there's a high calling he gives a meal that they are to share with others that provides full forgiveness from him to us There is a lot taking place, and he wants, in love, to share his thoughts with his people. And Jesus shares words that are deep with comfort, words we need today. His words are a promise to Carolyn, and they are a promise to all whom have been brought into his family through the forgiveness of sins. And Jesus' words have a strong connection to Carolyn. Can I pause a minute? We'll, we'll give Hank uh, just a few minutes. Um, let's see. Do you want to play a little bit of music just for a couple minutes? Great. Thank you. Yeah. Let's pause this a moment and, and you pray for Hank, if you don't mind, and then we'll, we'll continue in, in honor of Carolyn as well. Gracious God, uh, what hard days it is uh, when we lose someone we dearly love. We ask that you would be near Hank this minute. We thank you that he has loving friends and family around him. We ask, Lord, that um, you would care for his need for oxygen, that his Um, feeling a faint would uh, be removed quickly and you would guard and keep our brother jesus our great physician you know every cell in hank's body we ask that you would guard and keep him right now in jesus name amen so those words of jesus comforting words uh, for me i thought of carolyn uh, a strong connection there She loved bringing family and friends together to feast 
with them. She delighted in sharing um, family recipes, Polish recipes that she lovingly handcrafted with uh, fresh ingredients. She sought you, uh, your uh, comfort as friends and family, and she sought your enjoyment that she would share uh, with you. Jesus tells us in our reading today that it will be his delight to bring his family to life after death, and it is his delight to bring us together under his own roof to be with him. His own words, you've heard them. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? As Carolyn delighted to prepare a space and food to share with you, her loved ones, Jesus has done this for Carolyn. He has already done this for us. A typical large home in Jesus' day was many rooms built around a common courtyard and a shared eating area. Family members had their own room, but they gathered in community um, for uh, opportunities in the courtyard and around the table together. Jesus' words, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. His very intention. Though we mourn the loss of Carolyn as wife, as mom, as family member, and, or, or as friend, we need not mourn as those who are without hope, for Jesus has promised to love us this way, and we believe him. We do feel the loss as we should, but we may also rejoice that Jesus has called Carolyn to himself. She has just gone ahead of us to enjoy all these things in Jesus' presence. Jesus, so much about relationship, tells his disciples we'll be together again. And Carolyn, too, longed for there to be relationship after this life. These are words uh, Hank shared with me. It's in her writing from her Bible. And uh, I don't know if she's an amazing author or if she uh, heard this from someone else. After I go, while you're still here, know that I live on. She had that confidence. Vibrating to a different measure behind a thin veil you cannot see through. You will not see me, so you, you must have faith. I wait for the time when we can soar together again, both aware of each other. Until then, live your life to the fullest. And when you need me, just whisper my name in your heart. I will be there. God has truly made us for eternity. Sin got in the way, and he will bring life to us again. Jesus, in fact, took all of Carolyn's sin and her failures into himself on the cross and paid her debt in full. In baptism, he placed his name upon her, name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and welcomed her into his family. He gave this all for her, that he may now give her himself for unending days. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Again, a promise to Carolyn and all who look to Jesus in faith. Jesus' love and resurrection prove that he has the power to give life, and we are right to believe him. In Jesus' name, amen. With that, with grateful hearts, we sing together uh, the first, second, and fourth verse of the hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
I invite you to join your voice with mine. This is uh, the Apostles' Creed that uh, Carolyn uh, spoke, um, confirming her faith. And the words in line with what we learn from um, God's Word in the New Testament. Um, if you're of another faith tradition and you simply want to listen, that is okay as well. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the days of earthly life you granted to Carolyn, for the grace bestowed in Christ Jesus, for her adoption and rebirth in holy baptism, and for all the love she was blessed to receive and the love she shared wholeheartedly. We entrust her to your mercy, and we pray for the sustaining comfort of your Holy Spirit for her family and her friends. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join our voices now in praying the words Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the Old Testament, uh, God called Aaron to place this blessing, his own name, upon his people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn today, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Thank you. 
again, thank you for being here. Uh, blessing to the family especially. Um, you are welcome and invited downstairs for some light refreshments. If you would like to uh, sit in a time of prayer or just uh, some moments of silence, that's okay as well. So as you feel um, ready to go, you may exit this way. And at the bottom of the steps, you can come on down into the Fellowship Center. Thank you again for being here.